On your Wednesday episode of Locked On Raptors, Nike has no good jersey ideas. We have new corporate overlords who are already our corporate overlords, but are more our corporate overlords than they ever were before. It's Corporations Wednesday, baby! You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on and welcome to another episode of Locked On Raptors, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Wednesday, September the 18th, and I'm your host, Sean Woodley. I've been covering the Toronto Raptors now for going on 11 seasons on various platforms. You can find all my work over on the really bad website that sucks at Woodley Sean. You can find the show on Instagram at Locked On Raptors, and of course, you can join us over in the Locked On Raptors Discord server, which does not suck. It's a great place to come hang out among friends who like the Raptors and the podcast just like you. Great little listener community community we got building over there. Join us. Link in the description of the podcast. Free to join as always. Of course, you can find the show for free by following, subscribing, rating, reviewing on your audio app of choice. We're on YouTube as well. Go smash the subscribe button. Makes me feel very good. Strokes my ego and all that good stuff. So thanks in advance for doing that. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Down the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked NBA for $20 off your first purchase. And let's get to it on today's show. We are digging into corporate developments. Rogers uh, seems to be muscling out Bell, and uh, I mean not muscling out, throwing a whole lot of money at them to get them out of MLSE. We're going to get into the implications that could be on the horizon for the Raptors as Rogers takes over primary control of MLSC. Seems like a pretty big deal. We're also going to get into 30th anniversary celebrations for the Raptors, building off of what we're going to start with here which is Jersey talk as we got some leaks yesterday on the internet of city edition jerseys, maybe a classic edition Jersey one much better than the other. We're going to talk about all of that today with our dear pal, Katie Heindel from basketball feelings. Katie, are you ready to talk about business? Man, some business (laughs) up. And I think relevant to you, it was Rashid Wallace's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Sheed. Uh, yeah. Of course, the primary sponsor of our old podcast, uh, Basketball. We yes. love Sheed. Um, yeah, awesome. I, 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 I'm sad. I forgot to wear my Sheed jersey. I which wore is, mine. Uh, hanging up. Ah, damn. Damn, Katie. You should have texted me just so I uh, yeah, remember because I am bad at birthdays. Um, sorry to my family for that thing that continues to be a real bugaboo <laughs> for me. Uh, another bugaboo for me, Katie, is bad jersey designs. Uh, so yesterday we got some leakage from what seems to be Nike on what their city edition jerseys are going to look like this season for all 30 teams in the league. The Raptors, of course, included in that. And we know that with the Raptors moving into their 30th anniversary season, turning the page, they've been you know infusing purple colorways into a lot of their branding over the course of the offseason. We're expecting some form of jersey redesign or change up or switch up or commemorative additions for the 30th anniversary season. Uh, I have to ask you, Katie, to start. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. For those who haven't looked it up, go find Raptor City Edition jersey. But I'll bring it up for the YouTube viewers here. This is what we got. It's a black jersey. It's got some of those jagged pinstripes that we know and love. It's got some purple trim, and it's got the Vince Carter dunking through the legs Raptor logo and nothing else. No word mark. It seems like the number is probably going to go to the left of the Raptors head on the front of the Jersey. I would guess uh, to me, Katie, this looks like uh, stuff you would find at winners. That uh, is not official merch, but of course, Nike seems to be very much out of ideas when it comes to these city jerseys. What are your first impressions of this Jersey, which seems like the first that we've gotten a look at as to what the Raptors are going to be sporting at various times this coming season. It stands out uh, in the field of all the other pretty bad and dull jerseys. So, but I again, like, is that a good thing or is it standing yeah. out because they're also mid um, and quite dull? Uh, it has also absorbed through osmosis. I think, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the if it's the pressure, like this minimalist pressure on Nike or like the designs or something. But it's like there can be one flourish per jersey. It seems like, and that's it. And in some of cases, like if looking at the field flourishes a real stretch, it's like we made the 
the text a different color or slightly yeah, the Celtics bigger. is now mildly uh, radioactive green uh, yeah <laughs> or yeah if it's there if there's like a kind of a different color or a bright color then the font is like very shrunk and tiny mm -hmm. and illegible uh so yeah it, it it stands out in the field of terrible jerseys i don't i like the raptor dunking through the legs i like that it's something a little bit different mm -hmm. like I'm a purist. Like you could have just brought back the regular original Raptor. I wouldn't have minded that, but I like that mm -hmm. they tried something here. Um, I wonder if that's because they're the, they're bringing that Raptor back on some other form of the 30th like anniversary season jerseys, perhaps fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Why is it, it, why isn't it centered and why <laughs> like the size <laughs> of it is confusing to me. The, also, if it's good, it's not really black. It's like this kind of gray. Yeah, it's like almost slate. Yeah, I oh, don't... it always looks different in the images than it does. That's when true. It's actually on That's the true. Field. It no, could be yeah. a bit more like it even even it's like if you're going to do like black or like monotones, mm -hmm. they even made that in a kind of dull, duller way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It doesn't immediately it doesn't immediately stand out good or bad to me. And I think that's probably the mo with all of these jerseys is like yeah they're fine yeah uh to reference what our pal sean hyken who does great work covering the portland trailblazers pitched last night uh there should be a five-year moratorium on new jersey designs from nike because they're very obviously out of ideas like go take an inspirational walk go observe some culture go eat some food in a far off land and then come back and feel like you're creatively reinvigorated and come up with some better ideas here nike designers the denver ones were hideous like the 5280 thing we get it it's high in the mountains like we we get it uh, not even just that most like, people don't get it either yeah you no know, that's yeah. that's a thing yeah, yeah most people don't get it yeah uh yeah bad, bad stuff from nike does it give you confidence that the remainder of the raptors jersey lineup will be uh kind of what we want here's the thing katie like i i'm no titan of industry you know, we're going to talk about many titans of industry on today's podcast, of course, far more successful people than I. Um, but like to me, it seems pretty obvious and pretty like just like slapping you in the face that for the 30th anniversary for a franchise that, again, is kind of moving into a new era where the old look has very much gotten stale and everyone's pretty sick of the chevrons and the boring home whites and all of that. It seems just like an obvious money-making machine to rebrand to the original jerseys, colors, logos, all of it with a couple of commemorative jerseys to honor the 30th anniversary, maybe highlighting some of the eras the Raptors have had of great success. The Vince early 2000s era, the Kyle DeMar era, I think those jerseys were always pretty sharp. I don't see any reason why one of those can't come back into the mix as like a red third jersey or something. Um, you know, it, it seems very obvious that this should be what they do and it would make a lot of money and make 95% of the fan base very happy. But of course they have way lamer ambitions than that. Are, are you at all confident that the remainder of the Jersey lineup is going to be sort of more in line with what the fan base seems to actually want? And I, I say this, there's another leak out there. This one feels very unconfirmed. I can't even figure out where it first came from, but this Jersey's floating out there too. For those who are listening, it is the purple front, black back, Raptors jersey from the Vince Carter dunk contest era. A good jersey. I'm, I'm thrilled that this one's back. I would love to see it back. Um, I, I'm all in on that. It says Toronto on the front. The Raptors have had a paucity of jerseys that say Toronto on the front over the last little while, too. I'm in on this one. Uh, what's your level of confidence that they're going to get the rest of the jersey set right uh, and sort of improve upon this kind of sad almost commemorative but also new and modern and minimalist and bad jersey that they seem to have rolled out for the city editions you're talking about the digital camo jersey right <laughs> that's what you're alluding to yes and the italian heritage night one also yeah uh <laughs> um i think they'll get it right i mean mlsc obviously had design input on this one um yeah so and i would imagine like this is a ball they don't want to drop Mm -hmm. With the 30th uh, anniversary, they've certainly been teasing a lot of purple, uh, like across their social. And, you know, from what I know of the company, they things have like really been in the works since like last season. So mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of this stuff is in place already. So I would think they would not, <laughs> they would not mess it up. 
Mm -hmm. A part of me is like, bring back every good jersey. Sure. Bring back an extra one. I don't know if you're paying for it, if now Rogers is paying for it. In a way, we're all collectively paying for that. <laughs> or 50% of us are, depending on where your phone plan comes from. Anyway. Pojico Hive, baby. They can afford it. <laughs> they can't afford to make cell phones cheaper, but they can afford to bring back the Husky. Bring back the lethargic Husky with the Comic Sans. <laughs> bring the Comic Sans like font. I love that jersey. I really mm -hmm. do. It's mm -hmm. very funny. It's yeah. so plain and like looks wrong. Uh, and it I looks like it. a husky that just played forty eight minutes of basketball. The alignment is strange. Like it's <laughs> not. It's a good jersey though. Um, mm -hmm. The one that you just pulled up though, that one has really grown on me. I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing that one come back. I really, I remember like not being a fan of it when right. I was a kid for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but now I'm like, you know, I guess peak nostalgia. Uh, I'm into it. It's I think cool. the disaster. Sorry, I think the disaster that was the Tampa attempt at the purple front black back jersey with the chevron right. and like Forgot almost no purple was yeah. it kind of put that previous edition into a far more positive light for a lot of folks. I think. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I feel like they'll get it right. Just I, the, I guess I, I, I know I said it in a joking way, but I'm truly like, if there's more, like bring back a few. Mm -hmm. Don't just you if you're gonna go all out and try and celebrate this thirtieth year and like a, as we understand a lot of this is a cash grab anyway this mm -hmm. is merchandise uh bring back an extra one bring back an extra yeah. two put them in the rotation sure i like it don't bring back the t-shirt jerseys no uh, absolutely not especially the t-shirt camo jerseys the uh <laughs> the yeah. meeting of the two worst things in design history yeah. yeah but uh there's a lot of good options out there and i and i think like even something that's like okay like even that nike jersey like yeah it's not ideal it's mm -hmm. still not awful yeah like if that awful. is their fourth they tried jersey something. yeah yeah that's their fourth jersey and they have done the sort of successful rebrand otherwise and are, are you know kind of rolling out good stuff i can make my peace with that but mm -hmm. if everything is going to be kind of a bastardized version of like a, a, a new update on all this stuff it's gonna really bum me out i think and uh you want the classic that. and yeah i want the classic and i just don't want the current the most recent jersey set anymore it's like it hangs over the last five seasons of raptors basketball in a very nasty way they're ugly ugly jerseys it's not been a very good era well, let's pivot and get back to the colors that everybody agrees are super cool and are back in style and all of that um we're gonna come back on the other side and get into the 30th anniversary celebrations for your toronto raptors and what we want to see it's getting close it's going to be a through line of the entire season and uh, I'm excited to kind of get into some fun stuff on, on what we're hoping to see, you know, a little fun uh, commemorative nights that we would plan. Were we in charge? We're going to get to that coming up in just one second. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We talk about them a lot here on the podcast. And we got something a little different for you right now. Now through September 22nd, which is just four days away, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. It's a big deal. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Of course, FanDuel has all kinds of stuff for you to go to peruse over on their easy-to-use website. If you want to throw some money down on the Toronto Raptors, go on the, on the over or the under. Whatever you feel is the way they're going to go this season, you can go and make that bet. There's all kinds of futures bets for award winners and division winners, who's going to come out of each conference and who's going to win the whole shebang in June. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. Back at it here with Katie Heindel from Basketball Feelings talking 30th anniversary celebrations, Katie. Uh, I think the thing to start with here, kind of building off of the Vince Carter Duncan through the legs commemorative jersey, is the Vince Carter jersey retirement. Mm -hmm. This feels like a thing that's probably going to happen this year. I don't think it's been announced in any sort of, they don't have, they don't have like a, a promotion schedule out just yet, but it feels like Vince Carter is probably going to get the honor of being the first Raptor retired or honored, whatever the, the, the nomenclature of it is sometime this season. And look, I, I think for me, Katie, there was a time where I was queasy about Kyle Lowry not being the first, just because he's the guy who stayed. He's the guy who won the championship. He's the best Raptor of all time. 
But in the spirit of celebration and honoring everything in the 30th anniversary, I've softened my stance on that, I think. And I'm pretty okay if Vince Carter is the first guy. Time is time, right? Like you can't control for Kyle Lowry still playing in the NBA when you get to the 30th anniversary season. And so uh, I think I'm in on Vince Carter getting his jersey retired or at least honored. I don't know if I care about retiring the number as much as just like having the name up and sort of like a ring of honor type of situation or whatever. Um, Where are you at on Vince Carter? We'll get into some other commemorative stuff we'd like to see this year but that feels like the big ticket one that we're going to see at some point this year it seems like the the dunk contest is going to be that he won of course back in 2000 is going to be one of the sort of through lines as well there's going to be a lot of you know talk about that and celebration of that uh where are you at with vince carter night is, is a jersey retirement uh, something that you think is fitting for the 30th anniversary season for the raptors what do you mean there's going to be a dunk contest every night I mean, I'm in for that. Uh, like, bring back old legends, right? Like, okay, it's Jamario Moon Night versus Terrence Ross, and they're gonna go. Dude, I head see Jamario Moon I mean, is still the jersey I see the most. Like, the you know what I mean? Like, no, and I mean that in like not a random way. Like, if you go to a game, it's like there's a handful of Moon jerseys. I love yeah. them. I love seeing them. Yeah. They make me Hell so yeah. happy. Uh, yeah, I think this is gonna happen. I think it's probably bodes well that he's also gonna be a Hall of Fame inductee, right? So yeah. that. The, t- the timing makes a lot of sense to piggyback off of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder when is that something they try and beat out the Hall of Fame with? Like he's our yeah. guy first because uh, that's in November, I believe. So will it be like an early season thing? Is this how we're going to kick things off? Will it be middle of the season, end of the season? Uh, I don't really have a sense of the rollout for these things. I think there's like so much anticipation and they've got a lot of things planned, but I'm not sure uh, in terms of what the order is. I could actually see them beating the Hall of Fame to it, really starting things off with a bang, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm for it. I don't, I don't, I think the, to me, the order does make sense. Obviously, I love Kyle Lowry, but like he's still playing. So um, mm-hmm. Vince Carter, like I think we've all buried the hatchet in, in our feelings about how he departed, but you know, he was cornerstone of the franchise for such a long time drawn on the map that dunk contest phenomenal mm-hmm. still best dunk contest of all time i think yeah. um <laughs> tracy mcgrady was incredibly good in that dunk contest tracy mcgrady was very cool. underrated in that dunk contest yeah. also could have won mm-hmm. yes um gary stackhouse was in there doing cool stuff yeah are great. they gonna honor i hope they honor stack man <laughs> they could do like a live cooking show on the floor at halftime or something. That'd be really funny. Um, they've already, they've already got this stuff planned. They don't need to call me. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's, he is still probably because of the contention, right? Um, mm-hmm. But he is still including Kawhi Leonard, I think Toronto's foremost franchise name. Yeah. Yeah. He was literally the number one vote getter for All Star games yes. for the Raptors, who were like a four year old franchise. It's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nuts. There's also, a. No. no, no, go ahead. No, and also, if you like believe the documentary about him, he also invented the, the idea of going out to a club in Toronto, which is very cool. Uh, <laughs> is that true? That that's like a big through line of the Carter effect documentary is oh people didn't realize like nightlife was a thing before Vince. Uh, okay, not, I've seen that documentary and I do not recall that part. That's very. I'm funny. paraphrasing a little bit, but that's I think what they're trying to pull. He invented the club, at, right? Um. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other thing too, Katie, with this is the Brooklyn Nets announced that they're also retiring yes. Vince Carter's jersey, yes. which, uh, if you're going to like beating the hall of fame, I don't care. You got to beat the Nets to it though. Like you got to beat the Nets. There's a lot otherwise. of history there. Yeah. There there's is. a lot of history with the Nets. Yeah. I mean, the Nets themselves have like zero history, but the Brooklyn yeah, Nets, uh, Toronto. Yeah. 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 Not the um, Nets organization. I, I am, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm pro doing it. I think they should probably try to do it early in the season. I think that'd be great if they could tie it around Hall of Fame night for sure. And again, beat the Nets to it. Let me ask you, Katie, outside of Vince Carter, it, you know, it feels like there's going to be a lot of 30th anniversary celebration. It sounds like guys from the past are going to be coming through pretty regularly, which like is a thing that happens anyway. Like I, I think there's usually a pretty good contingent of alumni rolling through, but it feels like it's going to be at uh, at a peak this coming season is there anyone in particular it can be a, a legend it can be someone who's a little bit less sort of heralded but you love in particular who you'd like to see get a special night at uh scotia bank arena sometime this season 
Amir Johnson, I think. Yes. Do you also retire 15 when he's there too? Do you retire for both of them at the same time? I mean, he's probably, they pro like, he's such a fan favorite that they probably have invited him to come through because people would mm -hmm. just flip out, you know? Yeah. And yeah. like his reaction to that. And like, I don't know, you know, I'm incredibly biased, but I do think if we're talking about firsts, if Vince Carter invented the club in Toronto, sure. Uh, but I think Amir Johnson was one of the first athletes on the team to really embrace being in Toronto and like went and did all these kind of fun and really dorky things like in events mm -hmm. of the city, you know, um, mm -hmm. because I think for such a long time, that was a difficult thing to watch as a fan. Cause you were like, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, you know, they live here, they play here, but they don't, there's no real in, in social investment in the city. Sure. It didn't seem like a place anyone wanted to be. And this is what we told ourselves over and over again, right? Or had kind of told back to us. And Amir broke out of that mold and really embraced the city and has talked about it since, you know, since he's left. And um, yeah, man. And I would just like love to love to see it. I I'm so in for an Amir Johnson night. Uh, that sounds great. We got no shortage also, of nights. It's like in yeah. the season, we could honor everybody. Exactly. You got 41 nights. Hey, it's Carlos Delfino night. Yeah, yeah, let's go. There better um, be a Jamario Moon night. I know all those people with jerseys are I mean, to see the to of... see a full moon, a full moon arena. I mean, we kind of you you brought it up earlier. You kind of beat me to the punch a little bit. I think they should have a night where they honor the best dunkers in Raptors history. Get all the dunk contest winners in there. Get all the guys who competed in dunk contests. Mm -hmm. Get all the guys who threw down really cool yams at one point or another. Um, and just like every break throughout the night is just like a montage of one guy's cool dunks. Um, of course, Terrence Ross is heavily involved in this yes. one, which of course speaks to me big time. Um, that I would love to see that because like. Yes, the Raptors won a championship, and that is the thing they're known for now. But I do think for a very long time, the thing the franchise was most known for was having really cool dunkers all the time. And uh, I think as far as things you can hang your hat on as a franchise, that to me is more important than even winning a championship. You did cool dunks? Hell yeah. Let's celebrate it. I I'm uh, I'm all in for dunk night down at the arena. Um yeah, I, I think, is there a way they can kind of make this lame and uncool and overwrought, like, kind of like Nike jerseys? Like, I, I know it's, like, I want to be sort of steeped in nostalgia all season long, but I also know that sometimes oversaturation can take place. Are you mm -hmm. concerned at all about there just being too much 30th anniversary stuff at the point that it gets tiresome? Uh, I think it'd be a pretty hard thing to mess up because mm -hmm. you've got – you can reach kind of back into every era too. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, you're going to have to honor some more recent departures uh, if there's going to be people in town. And it's also just like, take advantage of the league and travel and like mm -hmm. take advantage of like, which guys work on staffs now of visiting yeah. teams and like playing. Damari Carroll coming through yeah. as an assistant coach for, I forget <laughs> like, who, but I'll yeah. Take, like, I'll take that. Um, yeah. No, I think it would be a really difficult thing to flub. I don't think in something like this, maybe this is the rare thing where there can't be an oversaturation of nostalgia because that's what the whole, that's what an like a anniversary of this size is predicated on, right? Mm -hmm. Not preying on nostalgia, celebrating nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. It's funny to, it's funny. It's very funny that as fan as fans, like in Toronto sports, your the first reaction is like, how can they blow it? <laughs> how could they blow a celebration of themselves no yeah. i'm i can't i can't really think of it um i'm sure some people will get a bit sore if it's like oh why didn't they honor this person i think they should there's a lot of fan right. favoritism you know so perhaps in that way some people might feel more personally mm -hmm. they dropped the ball um no i'm i'm even thinking of like some of the most like hated I feel, I feel like Alonzo Mourning and Kenny Anderson night, guys who refuse to report. Uh, Bargnani. I think that would be, oh, and that would actually be very funny. Bargnani night? Yeah, with, I'm in. With Alonzo Mourning. <laughs> with just like the, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. Il Mago night. I'm fully in on that. I mean, on the European, sorry, go Everybody ahead. could get a primo, primo sauce on the go, which could be good because it also addresses the fact that groceries are expensive. So people would love Bargnani again. Look, this guy got me a thing of spaghetti and a sauce. Perfect. He's the best number one pick.
not a Just mistake. Raining noodles from yes. the sky. Yeah, I mean, sounds <laughs> great. I, I, last pitch for me is a Spain night with uh, Calderon, Garbajosa, and Gasol all there. Ooh. That would make me very happy. I just um, got so nervous, like thinking of <laughs> Gasol coming <laughs> back. Like, would they do that? Like, excited, nervous. <laughs> Here's hoping. Uh, I guess Serge Ibaka could fall into that as well. He's a Spain yes. national team member, of course. So bring him back too. I mean, just have Serge there every night as a hype guy because whenever he he's in the, the building, he gets the that. loudest of pops. Yeah. A halftime show, Serge cooking at center at center feet center. Court, stack, center yeah. Field, center ice. <laughs> this was good. The, see, the thing is, like, once you start thinking about this, it, you do get more excited because you think of all the possibilities and all the faces mm-hmm. that you're going to see, and and even if it doesn't hit these these great highs of these ideas you and i are pitching um Mm -hmm. just freewheeling here they'll it'll still hit on some of them absolutely well katie on that note let's move to something uh that's a little (laughs) more ominous uh we could be going into one of the last couple seasons of toronto raptors basketball not being completely shrouded in the cloud of rogers we're going to get into uh corporate takeovers and mergers and deals coming up in just one second. We'll probably talk about the worm Ed Rogers too. Today's show is brought to you by friends over at game time. Go check out game time. It's the single best place to buy tickets for the sports concerts, comedy theater events. You want to go to, I use game time all the time because it's great and it's super easy to use. I'm dumb. I don't like having to peruse through apps that are difficult and have a bad user interface. No, I want it super simple. I want it easy. I want it laid out for me and game time does that. And they have all sorts of wonderful features that make it a super friendly experience. They have all in pricing. If you toggle this feature on, you see the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. It's a wonderful feature. You've got game time picks where they curate and make it easier to save on more sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. They get the tickets that are the best prices. You can go through that and not have to go through all the fluff. You get seat views, so you get a panoramic view of your seat. Maybe you've never been to a place before. I went to a couple baseball stadiums this summer I'd never been to, but I got great seats because I could see where I'd be sitting, and I bought those seats because... The seat views are wonderful. And of course, they have the lowest price guarantee. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section row for less somewhere else. Download the Game Time app and create and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Create an account, use the code locked at NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code locked at NBA for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. All right, closing things out here with Katie Heindel reacting to the breaking news of the day, which is that Rogers, uh, you know, everyone's favorite little mom and pop shop is purchasing the 37.5% share that Bell holds in MLSC, moving them up to a 75% share in MLSC with the 25% remaining uh, with Larry Tannenbaum. Ominous music, anybody? I might edit some in afterwards. Uh, This feels troublesome uh the i think as much as the sort of dual corporate ownership situation is not perfect at any time or hasn't been perfect over the last 10 years whatever it's been 12 years since it's all happened uh, I, I think the idea of having like two sort of dueling corporations at the table with larry tannenbaum as the intermediary has been pretty decent i mean they've won a championship that you, you can't take that away it's been successful Rogers owning everything, which is what's going to happen, it seems, once Larry Tannenbaum uh, completes his separation from MLSE in 2026, feels a little bit less copacetic. And I am concerned about what a single corporate owner is going to mean for the Toronto Raptors long term. I think Ed Rogers, we've known that there's animosity between him and Masai Ujiri, and I know people have their issues with Masai in the front office and what they've done, but I don't think there's any argument that can be made that our, Masai Ujiri has not been a net extreme positive for the Toronto Raptors franchise as the figurehead leader of the whole shebang. And if Ed Rogers is his only boss, I am curious how that relationship lasts or how long that relationship lasts going into the future. Um, you know, the Toronto Blue Jays owned all by Rogers. Yes, they are a team that spends money, but they kind of spend to the tax and never over. And the team usually disappoints and they don't, they seem mostly driven by just like getting people in the building and making all of the money back that they can, which fair, that's what businesses do. But Katie, the idea of a single corporate owner for the Toronto Raptors makes me feel very, very uneasy. Uh, How are you feeling about the breaking sports business news of the day? 
it feels accelerated. I think yeah. um, we knew this was coming, but perhaps in a, a year or two. Um, yeah. Moves like this always, you know, they feel too bloated to move that quickly. Um, so this is a bit of a surprise in that sense. It is a bummer. Um, I will say, you know, the Roger side kind of showed them their, I don't know, I won't, I won't swear. They showed themselves uh, with the potential of a WNBA team coming to Toronto when that those conversations were first happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and it basically leaked that, you know, which which Roger was it? Which Rogers was it? Ed Rogers. Ooh, yeah. uh, and Tony Staffieri, his we right-hand like, man on the board. Yeah, that's the not going to be yeah. very popular and not going to make a lot of money, basically. And then you look at the profits uh, season over season, even in the last three seasons of any mm -hmm. given WNBA team, let alone the high-performing ones and very dense markets like Toronto would be. Uh, and that's a real load of it. So that was... That was there was some transparency in that to me because you can see where the priorities are. As you you mentioned the Blue Jays, like that's a very good point. I mm -hmm. think while this team has not been in a position personnel wise to like get over the cap, it also has been a team that's not been afraid to spend money when they need to. Yeah, they were a tax uh, team when they won the championship. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So case in point, when they need to. So I think. <laughs> You can only get so far and so good in sports when you're kind of sticking to the margins. Mm -hmm. um, so that, granted, the Raptors aren't there yet and probably won't be there for a few years. Sure. So who can say how that's going to pan out? But it doesn't feel great. A part of me really, like I didn't, it was still funny when it was, a mon it was like a dual monopoly. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> both these companies own everything in Canada, pretty much aside from Loblaws or mm -hmm. the Weston family rather. So, um, our country's very cool, isn't it? Yeah. So like, why don't we get the Westons in here? Why can we have a, a three part ownership uh, anyway? It, but it did to your point, like it did feel like at least, you know, you, you have a uh, Larry Tannenbaum in there, someone who understands like, where to spend money, how to spend money, how to also create a sense of autonomy for the team to operate within, almost a little mm -hmm. bit of a bubble. So mm -hmm. I wonder where that's gone and how that works now. But yeah, I just like, it's a, it's a gross feeling. It's a gross mm -hmm. feeling. Not that like any NBA <laughs> or team ownership is not a gross feeling. Usually the people who have the money to do that in a, in a soul way are not good people and the yeah. money's not coming <laughs> from good places. And the corporate... <laughs> The corporate owners are corporate owners. So I don't know. I suppose we're just like, it's just the same as it ever was. But something about it, yes, it does feel, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, it feels like, I don't know. I, I'm torn on whether I'd rather the team have one singular lunatic billionaire owner or like a, a whole billion dollar corporation owning thing with like, yeah. like, a, like a boardroom. I, I think there's, you know, there's give and take to both, right? I think. You know, the decision making is probably a little bit more methodical with the whole boardroom aspect versus, you know, Tillman Fertitta deciding we're going to do some crazy stuff today. Um, so there's that. But I also think like the bureaucracy and red tape and just sort of like the the levels of clearance you'll have to get for certain things, the mm -hmm. lack of, a again, sort of an intermediary between the Raptors head honchos and the people who own the whole corporation, like, you know, not having Larry Tannenbaum as an in between feels like a big deal. And I, you know, I know he's still around for the next couple seasons, but you know, if he only has a 25% stake and the bell side of the room is not there anymore, I'm curious how that dynamic shifts like immediately once this deal goes through. And so, yeah, it's concerning, you know, look, Rogers has spent a lot of money on the blue Jays and they've invested a lot. They renovated the, the, the stadium. They have spent a lot of money on like free agents and stuff. That's, you know, if you're looking for the sort of positive side of things, like they very clearly are eager to invest in their sports properties. And so maybe that gives you some solace. But I, again, like they've never gone over the the luxury tax or the, the competitive balance tax or whatever it's called in baseball. And I think factoring in what the NBA's tax structure looks like and how punitive it's going to be and how much money it's going to cost teams like exponentially. Mm -hmm. Every dollar you're over that second apron going forward, or even the first apron, like I, I think that's going to be something a boardroom sits and says, "Hey, we can't do this. We got a business to run here." Even though spending all of the money on the sports team, you know, is kind of what you should be doing if you own a sports team. But that's just me. That's how I would spend my money if I was the sole lunatic owner. Um, so yeah, I, like 
yeah, I it, think like it's yeah, go ahead. where they've invested in the Blue Jays, for example. Yeah, the stadium looks great, but they've invested in places where they're just they are encouraging people to spend more money. Hundred percent. Right? That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're doing just enough to make the team competitive enough and the stadium a fun enough experience to get your ass in the door. And but then mostly, uh, yeah. So you're staying dollars for exactly. You're like, oh, I love drinking a beer in this fake little park they've set up, and it's lovely. It looks very <laughs> nice. But you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, of course you're going to stay longer and get another twenty dollar drink. Yeah. Although I, I feel like I saw you were at a Jays game recently, and I think you found the five dollar Bud fridge. Oh yeah, that, that, there's, that but one. there's like one on every. There's one in the five hundreds, and there's one in the two hundreds. Like yeah, you gotta food. scope it out. Yeah, you gotta. Look, okay, I, I respect it. I, I believe I'm dollar, sharing my secrets now. I went on Dollar Dogs nights and uh, <laughs> whatever those beers are called, deal beers or I don't know what they're called, but yes, I got a couple. <laughs> Uh, I mean, are we getting a dollar dogs night with the Raptors? If so, maybe all is forgiven from Rogers. Uh, if that's what's coming in, no, don't eat the dollar dogs. They're dollar bad prime for rib. Not good. Getting a dollar prime rib night. Uh, dollar <laughs> doubles actually would be good, though. I think the ownership changed of like who is doing the roti and double booth, mm -hmm. and I will say they weren't as good this season. Yeah, yeah. But dollar um, doubles night that would be actually tight. Rogers. Please listen to us, Dad. Uh, <laughs> we really need this. All right, Katie. I I'm sure this is not going to be the last we talk about the Rogers takeover. Um, and I'm sure you know there'll be all kinds of ominous developments between now and 2026 when they fully take control of everything and own our lives for the rest of time. We live in a very cool country. It's awesome. Anything uh, to round out here? Do you want to promote any parting shots? Anything to close things out, Katie? No, I'm just dreaming of all the the montages to come this season as you know my favorite thing at a at a sports event i'm in on the montages too and that's gonna do it um yeah thanks so much for tuning in thanks for rocking with the show thanks for subscribing following rating reviewing on your favorite podcast apps as always find us on youtube etc etc discord is free to join link in the description come talk about how scared you are of rogers <laughs> uh in the discord and we will talk to you again on thursday as jamar hines will be along we're going to pick up the swing skills series with him and uh, Friday, I'm going to get into some stats to watch for your Toronto Raptors as we get back to the basketball and leave the corporate talk behind. This has been Corporate Wednesday here on Locked on Raptors. We'll talk to you Thursday. Thanks for hanging. Bye-bye. Oh.